All right, let's now take a look at the problem of ML planning. My name is Oliver Scheel, and in this section, we'll talk about what planning actually is. We'll see a hierarchy of planning tasks. We'll see different approaches to planning in the form of interesting papers from the literature. And finally, Borja is going to show you how to train your own ML planner in L5 kit. So let's start with the basic question. What actually is planning? Often you see it defined as something like devise a sequence of actions to reach a certain goal. Applied to autonomous driving, we usually interpret it as given the current state of the environment, plan the future motion of the self-driving vehicle. In the clip here, you can see an actual planner trained bus. The planner takes the scene representation as input and outputs the future motion of the ego vehicle, shown in red, in the form of a trajectory spanning the next 1.2 seconds. On the previous slide, we have seen a trajectory being predicted. And as we see here, there are in fact multiple layers, a hierarchy of planning tasks. On the very top, we have mission planning, global route planning. You might know this from your mobile phone, for example, using Google Maps to reach destination. And here the output is directions to the target in a high-level form, such as which roads to take. A layer below, we have behavioral planning, which means placing, planning concrete waypoints on this route and or defining high-level maneuvers of the self-driving vehicle to execute. Below that, there is motion planning, which then generates an actual trajectory through these waypoints. And finally, there is the control layer, which translates the trajectory into actuator commands. For the following, we mainly focus or think of planning as these two intermediate layers, namely behavioral planning and motion planning. With that, let's look at some important planning methods. We begin by looking at a classical robotics approach, namely manually define your problem and the cost, and then solve this using any optimization methods. Common approaches are a star, rapidly exploring random trees, palm DP solvers, and dynamic programming. On the next slide, we'll look at two works in more detail. The first one is Junior, a second place submission to DARPA 2007. It implements a full driving stack, meaning going from localization to perception, prediction, planning, and finally control. And on this slide, we'll have a quick look how they do planning. On a global layer, they use dynamic programming to calculate the cost for certain points on the map. Then, layer below, they use two approaches depending on the scenario. For road navigation, they roll our trajectories along lane center lines and use the previously calculated costs. In the end, picking the trajectory with the lowest accumulated cost. For free space navigation, they use a hybrid A-star approach, which can also handle continuous scenarios. BIDOS EM Motion Planner is another example, also implementing the full driving stack, as shown on the right. What I'd like to highlight here is the usage of an HD map, which is often an important input to planning and other tasks, as we'll also see later. Spider's Planner was deployed on actual roads, driving nearly 70,000 kilometers as of 2018. The score planning algorithm consists of iterative stages of the expectation maximization algorithm, internally using cryptic and dynamic programming. Let's come to another important topic, namely reinforcement learning, where the agents learn through interactions with the environment. This has been very successfully applied to different tasks, such as playing Go, playing Atari games, etc. But there are certain challenges, especially when applying this to the fields of autonomous driving. Namely, we also need to manually come up with a good reward. We need a realistic simulator to train these models in, and in the end, potentially methods doing a sim to real transfer. And again, you can see a few important works in the fields of self driving listed on the right. One such method is learning to drive in a day from Wave. Here, they use monocular camera images plus steering and acceleration values as inputs. The camera inputs are processed by a CNN, and the numerical inputs are fused later. And then they learn a, a policy using the deep deterministic policy gradient method. As reward, they simply use driven miles without intervention, and they manage to show that they achieve feasible results of driving in the real world in a few hours. The next general method you could describe as learning costs, or as holistic methods, as they provide some degree of explainability. Here, we learn from actual driving data and in particular, learn to output a cost volume describing costs in certain places. One possible way how we could learn this is shown here on the right. Um, we could, for example, sample random trajectories, compare this against the expert trajectory, and then try to maximize their difference of costs. Let's take a look at one such work, namely the end-to-end -end interpretable neural motion planner from former Uber ATG. Here, they go from raw sensor inputs, namely LiDAR plus an HD map. First, output an intermediate representation, bounding boxes plus predictions, and then predict a cost volume. So there are two subtasks and uh, losses. The first one is a perception loss, and the second one is a planning loss. 
Similar to how we heard it before, it is a margin loss, meaning the model tries to maximize cost differences between the expert directory and a randomly sampled one. Implementation learning overall is similar, but we skip this intermediate step of learning costs. Instead, our models directly learn to imitate the expert. As a long and rich history, um, the vehicle Alvin was deployed on actual roads already in 1989, driving using camera images and a three-layer MLP, which is uh, quite impressive, I would say. But already there, they noticed the problem of covariate shift, meaning during test time, the model occasionally would run out of the training distribution and fail, as it had not learned how to recover. Um, there are a few ways how you can combat such covariate shift. One is something called interactive imitation learning, as used in DAGA, for example. Here, we unroll policy, and in each step, we ask an expert what the right action would have been. Another way is adding noise, which was introduced or formalized in the DART paper. One famous paper here is end-to-end -end learning for self-driving cars from NVIDIA. In this, the end-to-end -end learn how to drive, meaning a mapping, from camera inputs to steering commands. As we've seen before, we need to combat this covariate shift, and here it was done using certain image augmentations. For one, they had set up different cameras, recording road from different angles and offsets, and also added random augmentations. It was then successfully tested on real roads, and it inspired several interesting follow-up works, such as conditional imitation learning. Shuffernet chooses a slightly different approach, using a mid-to-mid -mid approach instead of the previously seen end-to-end -end one. That means they go from a restaurant bird's eye view uh, around the car to outputting trajectories. They generate synthetic perturbations to add this noise, as shown in the figure at the bottom, and also add history dropout to combat cause confusion, which is a slightly different but related concept. Here, the model learns to extrapolate from previous actions instead of correctly learning how to drive. Further, they introduce several auxiliary losses and tasks, as you can see in the figure, uh, uh, in the figure on the right, this improves performance and is common to several other fields, such as computer vision, also there helping get better performance. Now I'd like to conclude by listing several challenging but important open questions, as we see self-driving as an ongoing and unsolved problem. First, we'd like to know which method actually works best. Is it classical planning, reinforcement learning, or imitation learning? Uh, and if it is a learned approach, we need to know what data do we need and how much of it. Uh, further, self-driving should work all over the world, giving need to models which can handle all these different conditions. And there's a long tail in the distribution, meaning there are a few very rare but still crucial events, such as accidents. And finally, another important task is validation, and here possibly explainable, interpretable AI methods are relevant. With that, I'd like to pass it on to Boje for a practical hands-on session. Thank you, Oliver. Kit as an implementation of an imitation learning model inspired by Schoffer. Now we'll show how to train and evaluate such a model. Training loop is actually very similar to the one for prediction. You can see the notebook link from the slide for all the details. The main difference is adding perturbation to the input data. That is that we are not only training on the initial location of the ego recorded in the training data set, but we are also moving this around. As you can see in the snippet, we can specify the mean and standard deviation of the lateral, longitudinal, and angular perturbation. Such uh, perturbations are then fitted by an Ackermann curve, which is uh, reflecting how a car could uh, correct its behavior from the perturbed position. Then it's enough to put this, uh, to initialize the eco data set with this perturbation configuration. Such a model can be evaluated using open loop or closed loop approach. The open loop is again very similar to the predictions problem, so let's focus on the closed loop. In the closed loop evaluation, the key difference is that the position of the car in the next step depends on the action in the previous step, as depicted in the picture. Now, let's take a look at the code needed to do closed-loop evaluation. In order to simulate the position of the car in next time step, we have to do a closed-loop simulator. For this, we define simulation config, uh, with information such as whatever we should be using 
other agent's ground truth. Uh, and then we use it to initialize the closed loop simulator. Using the closed loop simulator, we can enroll selected scenes. After the simulation is completed, we can compute some metric describing how well the car drive. So this metric are what you could expect for evaluating a self-driving system. They measure uh, collision split into front, rear, side. They measure distance uh, from reference trajectory or a displacement error. Uh, level 5 kit contains implementation for all the metrics. So basically you only have to configure them as shown in the snippet. Closed loop evaluation metrics can give us insight into how different models compare to each other. On this slide, we see results for two models, one trained without perturbation and the other with perturbation. On the y-axis, we see number of intervention per thousand miles. Interventions are combined metrics for uh, collisions, distance to reference trajectory and displacement error that we have seen defined before. We can clearly see that the model train with perturbation is significantly better, which shows the need to have methods to address the covariate shift during training. We can use the same metric to compare results of a models trained with different amount of data. As you can see in this chart, from left to right, we have incrementally increased the size of the training data. On the y-axis, we can see a number of interventions normalized by 1000 kilometers. Overall, the intervention number decreases with the increasing training data set. In particular, between the 3.5 hours and 1000 hours, the improvement is also almost 25 times. Let's now take a look at some qualitative examples of models trained with different amount of data. Here is a simple scenario, lane following. For this scenario, even model trained on a small amount of data is already doing quite good. But if we add more data, you will observe that the driving is slightly more smooth and the car is able to keep the lane more accurately. If we go to the more sophisticated examples, the difference will be more significant. In this case, a model trained with a small amount of data is not able to correctly interact with the ego of the car in front, while here the model is correctly stopping and then resuming while the light turn green and the car in front moves. A similar difference can be seen on this intersection where again, even though there's a red light and the car in front is static, the model train with a small amount of data is colliding, while a model train with 1000 hours is correctly waiting for the car in front to start moving and then uh, continues on the green light. That's all about training and evaluating a planning model for now. I hope you find this interesting. Thank you for your attention.